Alright, welcome back. Got been a while since I made a video because the panel's been out of the avionics shop. So I would show you a few new features of what I've got. Now I've got a, a 750 and I'm gonna try to do this little Martin Polly style. I'll put my camera right there and see if that helps you see things. Although now it's probably blocking that one, so anyway, got the 750 started up. We're going to head down to the Chattanooga area today. Um, I do have the Flightstream 510 in with the 750 as well, so I can still push flight plans from Garmin Pilot to the 750. So we'll do that here. Put our Connect button here. We'll send to. What happens is you then get this message button here. We'll push a message. You've got new flight plan there. It shows you the flight plan including the graphical depiction. You can either store it if you want to use it later, or you can activate it. So in this case, we're going to activate. And now you've got our flight plan there. If you want to then see on the map, you can do one knob to the left. Down here is our, our knobs. Uh, the, the big knob moves me from flight uh, map to flight plan. Graphic, the terrain, Bisbee, and nearest. So I did one left knob and uh, now I've got the flight plan. It auto zooms while we're on the ground here and uh, there now our flight plan is stored and we'll go from there. So we're gonna do a heading of 120 so here on the autopilot we can dial in our heading of 120 if I twist it the right way. Our initial heading is 149, which is fine, 150. So we'll be a little bit more southeast, but that's what he needs. Probably to keep us away. And we're cleared to 7,000, so we will altitude pre-select 7,000. You can see the selection over here on the G5, and now we have altitude select there. Once we get in the air to activate, we'll put the autopilot on, which will also bring on the yaw damper. And we will usually go, I usually go by um, I'll probably do IAS so I can climb at speed, but we'll watch it, make sure it's behaving, um, and we can change it to vertical speed if needed. So, on the uh, GPS, you can you can scroll in. We don't have any taxiway letters here at Mount Holly, so there's no. It would tell you Alpha Bravo Charlie on the taxiways, um, and there's the runway. It'll auto zoom back out as it gets as it sees that we're getting uh, speed, so it'll start to come out there. All right, let's head on out. And there is 1450 Zulu. We are released. Mount Holly traffic lands five nine or six nine. Victor departing runway one eight. We'll be leaving the area to the southeast. Mount Holly. All right. All lit up. Good, good. Here we go. St. Louis departure lands 5969 Victor off of Mount Holly, uh, turning to 120 and up to 7000. That's 5969 Victor, St. Louis departure, radar contact. There's 120. Approach. Good morning, Elite to 939, uh, 1739, uh, sending 119 as an information, India, uh, requesting runway 31. Elite to 939, sound approach, expect uh, runway 31. I've been getting the visual lately, but I'll set you up on the ILS just in case. Okay, thank you. Purdue 58, sound approach, expect runway 31. Okay, what I just did was put autopilot on in heading mode, yaw damper comes on, I don't need to have my feet in the pedals, and I've got it in IAS mode, it's pegged at 101, it'll now auto trim, 
to that and climb to 7,000. Subtract the off our left. Uh, traffic in sight. You can uh, click on the traffic. It's Torch 64, which I believe is the Air National Guard aircraft. I can't tell what it is, though. Airspace, airspace message. So we're, we're going through the Charlie right now. And you can see here the depiction of the Charlie in the magenta circle there. You can see my range ring as well for the glide. In case we had an engine out. Eventually, we hope he'll he'll give us direct. I'll show you how to do that. Point six nine Victor, turn right direct College Hill. Right direct College Hill, six nine Victor. All right, so we're gonna hit this bar, get us to our flight plan, hit College Dale. We're gonna hit direct, and then activate, and then go to nav. That gives us the turn. Approach Sirius 345 Tango Sierra, level 4500. Sirius 345 Tango Sierra, St. Louis Approach, Bloomington altimeter is 29er, 9er 7. 97, 5 Tango Sierra, thanks. And now we'll head basically what I used to call GPS steering, and this is just, it's following the, the nav, the magenta line. So my heading on the G5 is still at 120. It's good practice to then sync it up. So if you just push the heading track button, you go into, it, it syncs up your heading. So now my heading bug's at 164, which is matching the heading that it needs to uh, counteract the wind that's coming out of the west and stay on track. All right, we're at 5,700 for 7,000. It'll give us two call outs. Uh, an oral, two oral call outs. One will be at 1,000 feet to go, and the other will be at 200 feet to go. There's a 1,000 foot call out. That's the 200 foot call out. It'll start to level us off here. I'm getting a green blink on altitude select. And now it's capturing the altitude, getting a green blink on altitude. Uh, approach Allegiant uh, 939, just want to start gain some speed, clear in, set the local bring my RPMs back to 2400, Thank you. and let it trim out at the new power setting. I'm going to pull this back to 22 and a half. For whatever reason, my iPad is not giving me weather, but that's okay. Let me show you how we can get weather on the 750. First of all, you can scroll. It's all touch screen, right? You can scroll left to right. You can pinch in and out like an iPad or something. Uh, let's see, let's say, so I'm flying this way and I'm going towards Decatur and I want to check their weather. I'm going to click on Decatur. Do this waypoint info KDEC, click that. Now you get all sorts of info. You can see their charts. Get a preview of the layout of the airport. See their procedure list, and you can scroll up and down here with your finger. Check out their runways. You can look at different configurations and traffic, length, etc. See all their frequencies. Again, you can scroll. You can see the up down here, so if it's turbulent or something and you don't want to scroll, you can up down. And here we go, weather. So this is the latest weather um, from 1454 Zulu. That was 10 minutes ago. So 1904. What I care about is what the clouds are doing. It's clear, and but it's misty, so it's four miles. I just want to make sure I'm not running into clouds on my way. Uh, it is currently 27 degrees up here, so wouldn't want to be flying through any clouds. Uh, to go back, you're going to hit the back button. That takes you back here, and I'm still in pan mode here. It also tells you distance to the point that you picked, and its elevation, and estimated time. And if I want to go back to where I am, hit back, 
and it'll put me back to track up mode and centered on my airplane. I showed earlier, you can scroll through screens without having to go, if you hit back again, you get all of the, the screens here. But if you don't want to do that every time, you can also scroll with the knob. One right click is the flight plan. Another right click is traffic. And again, you can click on the traffic, see who it is. So Torch 64 is over there doing its maneuvers. Click on terrain at 7,000 feet in the middle of the Midwest. Should not have any terrain. You can zoom in and out on the terrain there. Go to uh, the FISB data, which uh, is the weather. And it's way zoomed in for some reason, which doesn't make any sense. We'll zoom out here. And nothing on the radar. Again, you can pan on this stuff. And then one more click is the nearest. So it says no airports within glide range, but my nearest airport is Central Illinois Regional Bloomington. And to my left, Logan County, etc., etc. You can click on any of these and give you the information. And if you wanted to go direct to, hit the direct button and hit activate. But we're going to cancel that. I also have a quick button to the weather page. I just want to go direct to the weather. These four um, pieces of information in the corners are fully editable by the, the pilot by using menu and change user fields. Because I am not integrated with an audio panel, I don't have my audio panel here. Um, and um, there'd be some other things there too, I can't remember. But um, anyway, so instead of having my direct track and track, which is the default here, uh, I don't have that, I don't need it, because it's up there. So I put a quick weather button over there, and time to descent there. It says nothing right now, I'll show you how we can change that. Distance to destination, and estimated time to destination, so 2 hours and 14 minutes from here. I'm going to guess he's going to give me champagne next. So if I wanted to guess right, or if I wanted to guess that, I could go to champagne, Look up their frequencies. Command 6 Niner Victor, contact Champagne Approach 132.85. Look at that, 3285. Put it in standby. 3285 for 6 Niner Victor, good day. And then I can hit that. Now I've gone to 3285. Champagne Approach, Lance 5 Niner 6 Niner Victor, 7000. Lance 599, 699, Victor, Champagne Approach. Good morning, this Champagne Officer, we're at 2998. 2998, 69, Victor. Uh, amended my altimeter setting in the G5, and the uh, GFC 500 will then adjust to get back to 7000. My uh, last autopilot, the uh, Altimatic 3C, did not do that. You could change your because it was just altitude hold, it wasn't Victor, altitude select. That's 119 Victor, I tried to get you a couple times, uh, contact the Tower, 118.9 or 189 er Radio should be pretty quiet, so let me show you the how to set up a VNAV so we get this time of descent. Now, of course, we're running an IFR flight plan, so we have to descend when they tell us. But, let's say uh, we wanted to time it, there, there are no instrument approaches at uh, FGU. Uh, so let's say we wanted to time it to get to traffic pattern altitude. So if we don't know what traffic pattern altitude is, we go and look at the waypoint if you info. It's an elevation of 860, so let's call traffic pattern altitude at 1900. 7544 Kilo Charlie, will be a full stop? So if we go to utilities, go to VNAV. Oh, I always do this wrong, don't I? There we go, VNAV, pro well, okay, I know I did it wrong, so, sorry, let's go back. So, I'm going to go to my flight plan, and I'm going to click on my altitude there, and I'm going to say, I want to do 1900. 
And then you say, well, where do you want it to be 1900? And we can say, sorry, we can say uh, five miles before. So, sorry that was pretty clunky. Come in here, put the 1900, and then we're gonna do five miles before. You can do at or above, at or below, or between. We're gonna do five miles before College Dale at 1900. We're gonna hit the VNAV button. We're gonna say okay. So it basically creates a waypoint uh, five miles before FGU. And then if you can now go into the utilities, VNAV, it'll show you your vertical speed target and your flight path angle. I don't like three degrees in this case. Uh, it'll be about 700, 800 feet per minute. So I change mine to two. And do it that way. And if I do one click over, I now have one hour and 57 minutes time of descent. Gives me about a 10 minute descent before the field. And that's about what I want. I need, I need 5,000 feet to lose. And at 500 feet a minute, that's 10 minutes. That's why I like the two degrees adjustment there. I need to find a VOR on my airway here. Plenty of to golf to contact a mile and a half west of the Rantoul Airport. There we go. And uh, I understand you're requesting back to the RNAV 22 circle the runway one to the left. Is that correct? Hi, Farno Golf Roger. When able to turn left heading 220, vector to final. So I just threw the Bowling Green VOR in there. Hopefully you saw how I did that. Control, clicked it, went to waypoint info, clicked the frequency, and had it go into the active. Tells me about the VOR, and then gives me distance and bearing. Let's say we end up getting home and approach. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Point four nine golf. Thanks, and I'll have you turn to final in just a moment. So that'd be twenty five forty five. <clears throat> in this case, I'm going to show you a different thing. If you know the frequency and four four zero, Charlie, something in approach clock five six four six. Want to type it in? If you hit standby. You don't have to do the leading one. Twenty five forty five is all you need. You can either then hit transfer if you then want to switch. Or just hit enter and do that. Front nine four nine to golf turn right heading one nine zero. Join the final pitch course. You could also monitor that frequency. I can do the same thing on my. And we at zero Mike Charlie. Right of contact five miles southwest of Danville Airport. Cleared to the Tango Papalima Airport via direct Alpha Charlie Tango VOR. Then it's filed. Climbing maintain one zero thousand ten thousand. Expect by level four zero zero within one zero minute. I can monitor on COM two as well. So. In theory, I could actually listen to four frequencies at once. Clear on 59 or 69 or Victor, contact Kansas City Center, 124.3. Have a good one. 24.3, 69 Victor, good day. I was wrong, we're getting Kansas City Center, so now I can hit transfer. Delta 787, contact it flops it. 32.22. Kansas City Center lands 59 or 69 Victor, 7000, clear and smooth. Over 5, Niner, 6, Niner, Victor, Kansas City Center, Roger, FCM altimeters, 2, Niner, or correction, it's 3003. 3003, 6, Niner, Victor. The other feature I have with the 750XI is that we've got Smart Glide. Now, Number 410, Victor, contact Champagne, 132. Oles County is just outside my glide ring for whatever reason. If it on felt that I could glide there, I'd get a... 410, Victor, good day. I get a little dotted line towards it. And then if I, oh, there it is. So now it does say I could make it. And so if I lost my engine right now and held Have your request. the direct two button, it would then, the autopilot would take me to that airport. So whenever we see this uh, the Chevron line that way, I can glide. It is calculated that I could fly.
This setup is so nice now. It uh, kind of leaves me to fuel management, engine management, and looking for traffic. It'll fully run and RNAV GPS approach and ILS approach fully coupled. It's beautiful. I think that's what we'll, that's all we'll do for today on uh, showing the new GPS and the equipment. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in.